Well, hello and ahoy, and welcome to part two of the Search Summer Series. We really are devoting our Wednesday nights to be able to spend some time together in this online space. I really hope beginning conversation and, uh, and being able to engage with each other uh, in and around the concept of searching for not just our meaning and our purpose, but also the tools and the thoughts that we require to actually be able to make the search joyful and profitable, to actually be able to make our search for meaning and purpose with its tools and its thoughts and its relationships, ones which are actually really uh, you know, uh, fruitful into the lives of the people around us as much as they are nourishing for ourselves. So we love to be able to sort of say, you know, one of the things I, I love about a sense of searching is that we really search for things of, of value and of worth. You don't spend long looking for five cents these days. You don't spend long looking for things of inconsequence or lacking of value, but you will spend a long time looking for an engagement or a wedding ring. You will spend a long, long time searching for a loved one or a lost dream or something or someone of real significance to you. And that embodies a search. You know, I think about, and I know this isn't politically correct and it's a gender stereotype, but the concept of the, the man look, where we sort of casually scan a room looking for some clean socks and we can't find them, as opposed to, we're not just looking for clean socks, that's why we wear dirty ones, but we actually are looking for something of, of real significance that, that if, our, if our loved ones, our children, or our, our friends and family lost something, Maybe it's a confidence. Maybe it's a, a sense of, of purpose or, or meaning or value. We will do everything in our power to discover and to uncover those dreams and those possibilities again. Because in the search, we actually search for something of great worth. You know, as we, as we talk about the search for meaning, as we talk about the search for the tools that will help us uncover and discover this meaning, we, know we don't actually have time to be distracted. We actually have this, this is too valuable, so I'm so sorry, I, I can't talk right now, I'm on the search for something. I, I can't actually be, be waylaid right now, turn some lights on, I'm looking for something that I've lost or looking for something that has been promised for me and promised to me, and yet I haven't quite taken hold of it yet. We actually don't have the time to be able to be distracted or waylaid, even by many of the things which used to trip us up or cause us to stumble from our past. We actually go, no, that past isn't actually what is going to determine my present, and it's certainly not going to waylay me for my future, because what I'm searching for, that, that the, the peace in a relationship, the joy in being a mother or a father, the, the sense of, of, of worth and value in a workplace, the, the, the sheer sense of I was created to sing this song or write this book or enjoy this moment on a surfboard or on a push bike. You know, I was in, created to enjoy this and love into this space. I don't have time to be distracted by all the, the world wants to tell me or my past wants to whisper to me about why I can't and why I shouldn't. This is too valuable for that. You know, the search and our behaviors therein are very much so determined by what we believe, what we believe about ourselves and actually what we actually believe about is there a God or isn't there a God and who that God is and how he operates. If we actually see that there is no God, then so often we cast off restraint and we live lives which I believe are legitimately beneath what we can truly know and enjoy when we step outside of the maker's plan, when we step outside of what the creator actually called us into being to, to fulfill. When we actually have no belief context or if we believe God is harsh or, or dogmatic or judgmental or, or is going to withdraw from us, then so often our behaviors are the same. If we actually believe that we actually have worth, then we will actually live up into that worth. We will use language in around that. We will seek out people who will, who will call up the treasure and the truth about us to the surface and then propel it further forward. If we believe that we are actually made on purpose, for purpose, then we will undergo uh, all manner of hardships to actually see that purpose fulfilled and brought into the light and for us to enjoy and for others to engage with and be set free in. 
You know, I really believe that our journey is one to be enjoyed and that life is an absolute gift. It's worth searching for. Now, Vincent van Gogh said this, if I cease, if I cease, cease searching, Vincent van Gogh said, if I cease searching, then woe is me, I am lost. That's how I look at it. Keep going, keep going, come what may. And we understand that Vincent had all manner of different health issues, mental health issues, that actually saw him uh, still continuing to create masterpieces, even though there was a sense of madness and manicness in his, in his illness, he still created something and still searched out that gift, that God-given gift, even if he didn't recognize it as having come from God, it absolutely did. And he searched it and he maximized it. And we are still looking at those paintings today going, wow, how beautiful is that? Challenging question for us today would be, if Jesus was looking at my life right now, if he was living in my life right now, if he was looking into my situations and circumstances, how would he handle that situation? How would he handle that dream? Would he be would he be bringing it to the surface? Would he be bringing it into accountable relationships? Would he be praying about it with great expectancy? Would he be giving thanks for it? Or would he be actually burying it and, and hiding it? Would he actually be ashamed of it? Because I don't even want anyone to think that I was proud. If Jesus was in you and, and you had that chance for a relationship with a workmate or a neighbor or a family member, how would he be maximizing this right now, the worth and the value of it? What would he be speaking over it? What would he be giving time to? What would he be saying no to in that equation of there is a treasure there, it is worth searching for, it is of great worth and great value? How would Jesus handle that situation? I believe that Jesus loves me. I believe that Jesus lives inside of me. I believe he has renewed my mind and actually enables me to think like him. I will never be him. I never want to be him. He is my loving father. I actually get to, though, walk in his footsteps. I actually get to become more and more in my speech, in my thinking. What I'm looking for gets to mirror him more and more and more. And what a delight that actually is. How would Jesus handle the situation you are in right now? Hey, can I pray for you? Again, from that foundation of truth, from that place of love, of no judgment, no comparison and no condemnation, but an absolute belief that you are brilliant. Let me pray for you. Dear Jesus, you came looking for me. You said that it's not the, the healthy that need a doctor, but the sick, and that was me. You came looking for those that were hungry and those that were lost and those that were searching. And, and in your search for us, you found us and you paid the very, very highest price for my very, very worst day because you knew what I was worth to you. Thank you. Father, for my friends, my brothers and sisters online and, and in this space, you paid the very, very highest price for their very, very worst day because they are worth something to you that you came searching and seeking them. Thank you. Father, would you let them know how much they are mean to you? Would you let them know that there is a great treasure inside of them and that you are so excited and so delighted to bring that to the surface? Bless us this week as we search that out, giving you the time and, and actually understanding the true value of what you have placed inside of us. Hey guys, thank you so much uh, for the time. I'd love to continue the conversation in our comments bar. Find us on Facebook, YouTube, our website. You can join us at 10 a.m. for our Sunday morning services uh, at 490 South Arm Road, Lauderdale. You can find us online at the same time and the, the info will be in our bios and bits and pieces here. I really trust that you got something out today. You understand that you are worth something and you are searching for something of worth. And until next week, I really hope that you can go and love somebody just as you have been loved. God bless you.